Hey everybody, this is David Barnyard Bees. What we're going to do today, we're going to pull some honey from these uh, hives over at the Freeman Farm down below my house about 10-15 miles. So we're going to check and pull some honey, take it home, and I'm going to show you how to do a simple extraction with it. Uh, I will maybe later on show with the extractor, but I'm going to show you how you can get the honey without having to use an extractor and I'll it'll be pretty interesting I think to some of you very easy very simple to do and the bees are very busy today for sure don't know how calm they are I'm going in like this I may have to change my mind here in a minute we'll find out we'll see how busy they are busy bees of course there's absolutely a lot of bees in here so don't be mistaking this for a small weak hive because it's not a lot a lot of bees in here I am going to use a smoker I do advise to use smokers especially for the new beekeeper because it'll it'll calm your bees down a lot also just a quick announcement uh, we will have 20, 21 packages on sale now. Uh, not on sale, but for sale. Let me take it back, for sale. We put them for sale uh, about a week ago, started taking orders for 2021 packages. So if anyone interested in the 2021 packages, barnyardbees.com. And also, now is the time if you're pulling your honey supers, that my advice is to go ahead and get your guardians put on there. Because once I pull this honey today, I'll put the guardian on. And because it's getting that time of year, we're at the end of June, so there there can be a lot of uh, a lot of hive beetles coming in, and these will absolutely block out the hive beetles. Barnyardbees.com for your uh, guardians if you need those. So let's get into this and look and see how well now this is a super i just had added before we went to panama city on breaks so i don't know i don't know how much is, is in it i don't know it looks like there is a little bit in there for sure but we're going to go ahead and i need to get an empty frame over here A lot of bulge honey looks very good. Let's get those bees off there. Uh, let me go ahead and get a super. Okay. Basically, all I'm doing here, I'll show you a close up of this. It looks very good. Very bulged out, looks very good. Heavy, solid cap. And just one at a time, I'm going to put them over here on this empty super that I got. And I won't show you the whole hive because it'll draw out the video too long. I just want to show you how we pull it. And then after we pull it, or show you how to you know, pull a, a few. Okay, that right there, all open. So of course that'll go back in there. For sure. See how it drips out too? I mean, you're, it's, it's way under uh, moisture content, or it's got way too much moisture content. So, what we'll do, we'll stick this back in here. Right now, uh, we have clover here everywhere. It, it just, it's absolutely packed out. It's all over the field, just right here in the yard. Tons of it. And, uh, and then on top of that, they got canola. I don't know if it's blooming yet. I need to go check. I need to drive out by it and see if it is. I'm not sure exactly when, but so where a lot of people don't have that advantage, we have it here at the Freeman Farm to get uh, canola. So that's definitely what we're looking forward to getting. I've never collected canola oil. Now some people do tell me that it's it's got a it, it crystallizes fast. I don't know. That's uh, Bill, our friend that. Uh, that helps us with our bee chat some, and he's a, a member over here at this the bee farm, or the, the 
the Freeman uh, Hunting Club is what they call it. He told me that it has a, a lot of, it crystallizes really fast. I don't know, we'll find out. But, uh, but here's a few, a few of these mean bees. We'll shake it with the camera set. They're mean. Horrible bees. Horribly mean, aggressive. Uh, see, there's another one right there. It's they're still working on it. They're still working on it. So we'll we'll go put it back in. We're pulling out these full ones to take back to do a simple extraction on them and some cut comb. I love cut comb, and that's what we're doing. These are. A lot of honey, a lot of bulge honey, good shape. Also, see, the bulge, if you want them to bulge like this, that's why when you put your frames in there, you try to, don't butt them up to each other. And they actually make a tool for that as well, if you want to, to use. That'll actually space them apart just enough to where the bees gotta draw that out. So, so that works very well. Check these aggressive mean bees off. I want to tell you something about what a lot of people say, and I speak this over and over and over, and, and a lot of people just don't get it and just don't believe it. I'll make a video and I'll tell them the bees are calm, the, they're they're nice gentle bees, and they're like all oh, bull, do it in a big hive. Well, you got a hive body, three supers, absolutely packed full of bees. Look at them. What does this not qualify as a big, a big hive? Should these, how come these aren't aggressive and mean? I tell you, you can listen to them all you want, but I'm, but I'm telling you, unless you get a good stock of bees that are gentle, I don't care what you say or what they say, it makes all the difference in the world. Now, there, there is other factors involved in bees not attacking you, sting you. One is, is good weather. I believe that 100%. It's sunny out, it's hot. You can see I'm, I'm sweating, it's hot. It's a little bit cloudy, but it's mostly sunny. We're, in, we're still in the nectar flow. All that does make a big difference. But on top of that as well, because if you take some of these colonies that, that people have that are they're mean and aggressive, even in those right conditions, a lot of them are gonna be very mean and angry bees. That's the point right there that I'm making when I, when I talk about the gentle bees. Start off with that gentle stalk of bees. It gives you more advantage. Are these grumpy at times? Sure. Sure they're grumpy. You've seen the video where I brought them over here after the trip. Open that entrance and they was, they was mean. They was uh, cranky. It was just bad timing. Even the nicest bees can be mean, but it's that edge that it'll give you when you're, uh, when you're beekeeping. That edge with those nice gentle bees. Do they make us good honey? Absolutely. If, and, and the point that I try to make to people too, if it was mean bees that made, that makes the best honey, how come we're not farming uh, Africanized bees? That makes sense, wouldn't it? I mean, if, if you wanted the, the meanest bees to be the best bee, ma the best honey makers, then we could just all dress up in full bee suits and farm those and get all kinds of honey. But it's just not, it don't make sense. It don't make sense. The only thing that would make sense with a main colony that would give it any kind of advantage at all would be attacks from bears. But even with that, bears don't care. If they could get in, into an Africanized nest. They got so much fur and uh, pain tolerance, they just don't care. And it, the bee stings don't hurt them. So they're gonna eat bees and all, it doesn't matter. So, but anyway, let's, uh, what I'll do, I'm gonna go down through, like I said, I'm not gonna show you every single one because it just, it's, it'll get boring. There's really nothing that I'm doing except shaking the bees off, dropping them down in this empty super. And uh, now normally when I shake the bees, I do shake them off in here, but sometimes I'll do it out here in, in open just to demonstrate. And of course I'll look and make sure the queen's not on here, but she's not gonna be in the upper, upper uh, very top chamber anyway. If she did, it'd be a, a fluke and a freak, and it, it, she just not, she's not up there, and I don't see her anyway. So we'll just see shaking the bees.
watch the mean bees. Okay, here's your big colonies. Where's your, where's everybody's answer that says the big colonies are the mean ones, or you wouldn't do this to my colonies? And when people say that, you're probably right. I wouldn't come to your bee yard and do that because I probably would uh, be stung to death if I did. But that's what I'm talking about. You know, start off with a good, good, uh, good genetic of good kind, gentle bees. It makes all the difference in the world. That's why I, we advertise it at barnyard bees. Is because we do have good gentle bees. And now is the time. If you want your bees as early as possible next year, now is the time to get those ordered. Because the later you order, the later you're gonna get your bees. That's just how it is. First come, first serve. So you get your order in now, barnyardbees.com or call the store, 706-971-2700. I'll put the link in the, uh, description for you where you can go look uh, so so that's basically what I'm doing so now uh, these these frames right here I'm gonna have to put a couple full frames in here but otherwise I'm gonna checkerboard these again and uh, go on to the next super and that's all we do we just keep on going down but anyway let me set this so I used a smoker but they really didn't even need it. It helps though. I, I advise to use a smoker, especially with new beekeepers. It just it makes sense because it'll give you that edge to help you give make those bees just a little bit more gentle. It just kind of it calms them down really really fast. So Put these over here. And I'll go ahead and checkerboard. I'll pull these frames out. It just, it's as simple as that. I just go across here, just pulling out the frames that, that look good. Not all of them are, like I said, filled out because remember last video, we did checkerboard these. Now, some of them, like this one here, and there's a way you can tell. See, this side's mostly capped. You can see right there. This side here isn't. Uh, one way you can tell, of course, you can get the refractometer, I think you call it. We have them at the store. They're, I mean, barnyardbees.com if you need it. Or you can do it the old-fashioned way. You just shake it. We can get the bees off of this. Just hang your things off here. You can turn it upside down and give it a little shake onto something solid that you can see. And it, it just give it a little shake like that. And if it drips out, see it's dripping there a little bit. Uh, it don't always mean it's not ready, but if it's pretty thick and it's coming out hard, you know the difference. So you'll, you'll put it back in there and, and wait and come back later on to get it. I'll fill these supers up. You can see here, I'll put eight in there, put them on the truck, checkerboard those, put them back in there because like I said, they're still working. They're still working. There's still uh, uh, plenty of uh, plenty of clover, white clover, tons of white clover. It's all through the, the yard. The orchards have tons of pollen and like I said too, we're watching out for the canola. So the next step I'll show you is how we can We'll scrape it into a colander, and I'll show you how we do that. So I'll see you back at the house. Okay, we got our honey. Uh, we just now got set up. We had a little bit of bad luck as I was setting up. Uh, I noticed in my dog feeder something was moving inside the dog feeder, and I yelled at my daughters to come out and uh, help me watch one side of it while I opened the other side end up being a skunk and so we end up making a, a homestead hacks video out of it because of the critter situation and I always make put those on homestead hacks anything to the garden stuff like that but anyway you can check that video out on the homestead hacks but we finally got him run out of the, the dog feeder 
and it run around and actually right where the camera is sitting it's down in that hole so I know said about that I just wanted to tell you what all was going on with that okay here's here's my honey I have to move this back that sun is I can't see because of the glare uh, basically what I do here's the frame of honey right here now if you want to do this without an extractor get rid of the one dead bee it's on there and you can set it down in a deep pan like this and if you want now you can also make like I said cut comb with this and I'll show you how to do that in a second but uh but actually all you do is just start scraping get you a spoon like this and start scraping down like that scrape it down till you feel it getting rough you can tell where the honey stops Now you can actually use this over again and the good thing about doing it this way is if it doesn't have any strong foundation in it like wire it's a uh, it's a lot easier to do this way and it, it won't bust out that centerpiece where you want to reuse you just got to be very careful just scrape on it you can feel when it when you get in there deep enough to where it, it and if you do cut through a little bit, it's not going to hurt it if you want to reuse these frames for, you know, more honey supers. So you just scrape it, scrape the honey off, like so. It did best through a little, little bit of snow to hurt it. And also with, with this here, you could actually, if you just wanted to scrape the whole thing out too, sometimes you're better off just to do that. Because it's, it's, it's really, uh, it's not that hard for them to draw out foundationless. Let's just scrape it all out. That's not gonna hurt a bit. So you can see where the, we've got the wire in there. It'd be a lot easier. You could take your time and do it real easy if you wanted to, but I, I like doing it this way. It's you can see a little bit of the foundations left. You could leave as much as you want, or you could cut it all out. It doesn't really matter. The bees will resume and clean that up. It really doesn't matter. So you just scrape it, just continue to scrape it off there and then you can take this right here and put it back in the super and let the bees clean it out it's as easy as that uh, now of course it is when you got foundation like this it is a lot easier to scrape that out this is a plastic frame foundation right here and and this is uh, you could actually use the extractor for your plastic frames they work very well for that for sure those are very strong now there's a after you get this process done there's a a simple way of screening it you don't want in my opinion never heat your honey up it destroys it it destroys the enzymes the bacteria in it that are healthy for you it's kind of like why why cow's milk gives people so much problems it's not the problem that it's milk the problem is it's not all natural and it's been uh, pasteurized heated up and destroyed the the good part in the, the milk that actually aids in digestion and stuff so kind of similar to that so so that's all you do right there basically you just you scrape it in there like that okay all I do is lay it down like this and and basically you just you just cut it out since this doesn't have any foundation in it 
simply just take your knife and push it away from you, like so. There's your frame. It's, I mean, that's going to take some of this here and cut it into the, or leave it for your bees to clean out. Either way, because it, it's more or less recycled, the bees will reuse it, I'm sure. So there's your slab that you got right there. Now, as far as this goes, you just cut it as big as you want. If you want a small pieces inside each jar or big pieces, I mean, you can just take it and Well, right there's 14 pieces. So you could put that in 14, it depends on how big a piece you want. Or seven bigger pieces, two pieces. So, and that's it, that's, that's basically it. But doing honey simple. There's nothing uh, complex about honey. Um, very easy to, it, it's work, a lot of work. Don't get me wrong when I say easy, I don't mean easy as far as work goes. There's a lot of work in it, it's just more, it's knowledge wise, there's nothing really keep pulling honey and extracting it and now this here you can see the I don't want to pour out I'll take that now and what I'll do I won't show you on camera because it's it's it's, it's self-explanatory you can get these double screen things here that work very well uh, we actually got these barnyardbees.com as well if you need and it's a double screener this is a little bit thicker screen this is a little bit thinner and then you just you run it through there, put this on a five gallon bucket, just like that, and dump all that wax, honey, right in there, right into the five gallon bucket. And then from there, if you want to screen it a little bit more, I don't have one or I'd show you. And, and I'll put a link in my upper right hand corner where I was extracted honey, and, and I'm pretty sure I, I used that in the video. It's a, you can go to Lowe's or Home Depot and get these uh, paint strainers, they're just fabric. And they'll stretch over five they're really cheap you can get like two of them for five dollars or four dollars stretch that over a five gallon bucket and pour what you already pre-screened into that bucket and it'll make it as clean as you ever want it and you you've got to be careful with natural honey you don't want to do anything too much to it it's okay to screen it and run it through that uh paint filter but don't do any more to it than that you're done and then put it straight into your jars. It's as it's easy as that. There's nothing to it. So I just wanted to show you that process. Uh, we'll show uh, the next time I pull some out, we'll show you in the extractor how we do that. So that's about it, folks. Don't forget. Don't forget about our bees. Uh, Barnyardbees.com. If you need 2021 20, packages, taking orders now. Uh, beekeeping supplies, anything and everything pertaining to beekeeping, we've got Barnyardbees.com. Don't forget. Click on the little bell, like, and subscribe. Thanks for watching. Barnyard Beast.